Yes. Okay. Oh, okay, the recording is started. Yep, okay. Go ahead. So we're fortunate to have uh, Dr. Wei Wong with us to share his experience as co-founder and president of the Public Health Film Society. Now, please feel free to ask him questions both during and uh, after the spotlight presentation. And after the spotlight, we'll have a brief meeting with Yana Europe members who can stay on the call. But before we get uh, to Wei's talk, our Yana Chair of Chairs, Rachel Littman, will share with us more background on the Yale Alumni Nonprofit Alliance. So over to you, Rachel. Great. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to the call. Thanks, Thatcher. Just um, wanted to make sure everybody was aware of the history of Yana and where we are now. We launched um, in New York City in 2011. It was incorporated and registered as a um, federal IRS not-for-profit 501c3 about 2014. Uh, with the mission of Yana essentially is to draw together and harness the mission-driven passion of Yale alumni, which is now expand expanded really to include anyone uh, who shares our mission, and those who are interested or involved in advancing the greater social good. Our key mission areas uh, developed through the mission statement as well as um, through strategic planning um, include building community, creating a lifelong learning and engagement opportunities, creating opportunities for and supporting Yale students interested in exploring and pursuing meaningful career paths in the social impact sector, and fostering contributions back to Yale and to society generally. So a quick snapshot of where we are now. Um, if you haven't checked it out, we have a new and constantly updated website, which is YaleNonprofitAlliance.org. Hope you can check that out. We have a Europe chapter on there as well. And there are links, uh, icons on the bottom of the main page of that website showing our various social media platforms, including a brand new YouTube channel where we will be posting this uh, program. Uh, we just put one up there from the Diversity and Equity and Inclusion event. And we have a bunch of other software programs that we are either building or getting licenses to help us develop uh, our membership base and help make connections between members who might be looking for jobs, uh, if there are organizations looking for volunteers or funding or donors, and for individuals who might be looking for their own volunteer or board opportunities, uh, as well as trying to match mentors. We now have about 37, 3,800 people, uh, contacts in our database, and we're looking to grow that. We are operating off of only a $20,000 budget, annual budget, uh, which does include funding from AYA, so thank you, Nicholas. Uh, we have a few paid project consultants we use if we need some extra expertise or devotion to various technology projects, but basically the entire organization is run by uh, volunteer board members. We have a growing network of chapters, so it was New York City for a few years, uh, Bay Area was the first one, and then we built out with other ones, including uh, New England, which includes all the states from Maine. Uh, down to Connecticut, so it's Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Vermont, um, New Hampshire, and Maine, uh, Seattle, Denver, Dallas, uh, D.C., Europe, which you are all part of, and India. So uh, people are hearing about us and we're growing, which is terrific. We've done a lot of collaborating on programs with other Yale SIGs, and SIGs are shared interest groups. Uh, again, there are a list of these on the AYA website if you're not familiar with them, uh, as well as Yale clubs around the country and the world, and collaborating with other sort of similarly interested alumni groups from Stanford, uh, Princeton, we're working on something, and we're all working to leverage the mission-driven alumni base from several top universities so we can uh, harness this power and reach more people around the world. We've developed very strong connections with Yale students. Um, we've been working on this through on-campus collaborative programming, programming with the Undergraduate Career Development Office. They have a full-time person who's focused on social impact careers. Uh, there are student groups and a, sort of a hybrid student alumni group called First Gen Yale, and another one called A Leg Even, which is really focused on those who um, either first generation or come from financially under-resourced families. We just collaborated with SOM uh, in their student-run philanthropy conference. We have a growing mentorship program and a new funded and supported summer social impact summer fellowship that we have developed with Dwight Hall. We are continuing to work on and refine uh, how we implement our mission and our strategic goals 
We have gone through an uh, one phase of a strategic planning process and we're in the middle of one right now, exploring how we can take YANA to the next fundraising stage and exploring things like grants, alumni funded endowment, um, focused programming and things like that. We have a very strong governance infrastructure. We've got revised bylaws. We have new documented policies and procedures. We're looking to be uh, setting examples for other Yale SIGs and other um, alumni nonprofit organizations. And we're actually approaching our third term for board leadership. So there's still a few people who've, around who've been there since the beginning, but we've got a strong enough infrastructure that we can start to rotate leadership board and, and we've institutionalized many of the processes and the culture. And really, most importantly, we're really in an open, inclusive culture and organization. Um, we, look, we are the main organization uh, looking to roll out the Yale Alumni Task Force report and video on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, we're really proud to be taking that role and working with other SIGs in organizations around the country and the world. So that's basically where we, where we are. And I can take questions now, or people can feel free to, to email me if you have anything specific later. Thatcher, back to you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Rachel. Uh, now let's let's uh, move to the spotlight. So it's over right. to you, uh, Wei. Wei, I'm going to switch the the uh, presenter control to you. Give it a second. Let me know when you have that. Okay. Can you guys see my slide? Okay. There we go. I can see it. Okay. Fantastic. You can see the slides. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thatcher, for the invitation to um, give the inaugural presentation on the Spotlight Talk for Yana Europe. Um, as uh, as you mentioned, my name's Will. I'm president of the Public Health Film Society, a UK registered charity. Um, excuse my croaky voice, I'm just recovering from a cold. Um, if I'd known that this would be one of the first videos on your YouTube channel, I would have put on some makeup or something. I <laughs> uh, had a better background. But uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I'm really, really honoured to, to be giving this talk and uh, really keen to get your feedback um, and the, the feedback of the audience on uh, you know, the ideas really presented here um, and how we may progress. Um, so I graduated from Yale uh, in 2006 from the School of Public Health uh, and I'll be talking about Public Health Films and the Public Health Film Society. Um, all of which are ideas which really originated from uh, and, and were inspired by my time at Yale uh, and in the US um, where I joined the uh, Public Health Film Club that was a, a key part of uh, Yale School of Public Health when I was there uh, and also attended the Global Health Film Festival which was in the early throes really uh, an initiative that was um, started by the American um, Public Health Association, which is the sort of national professional body there. Um, when I came back uh, from the States, um, I continued my studies at Oxford, and me and a colleague you know, really wanted to pursue these interests. Um, and so we started off the Oxford Public Health Film Club, um, which was supported by the university. Um, and then that became the Public Health Film Society. Um, and so the Public Health Film Society, um, who we are, we're a, a group of um, public health practitioners, students, academics, um, who really are trying to spread the message of public health using the media film, but also trying to advance the field itself of health-related films. Um, and how do we do this? Well, at the moment what we do is, is mainly event-based. So we have a regular film festival and regular events, uh, film-based events, as well as a film competition. But we're also involved in collaborations uh, to try to advance the field with universities to try to build up the evidence base uh, for the use of films in public health. Um, and we have a little sideline in, in um, film 
making free consultancy, uh, where we work very closely with the professional societies here uh, and advise them on what might work in terms of um, putting their messages across through the media and film. <coughs> so before I talk a bit more about these things, I really wanted to bring us back to, to what is public health and why is it so conducive to non-profits. Um, and I think here, I think uh, I draw inspiration from Professor Charles Winsworth's definition, which is still widely used. Um, and this is a definition that he, he promulgated in the 1920s when he set up the school. And it talks really about, you know, a number of organisations and a number of different entities getting involved in promoting public health. And it actually made the case for public, uh, private and non-profit to be involved in the promotion of health. Um, not only that, but when we look at the workforce, they are quite a diverse workforce in the field as well. So not only do we have a, a number of organisations involved in promoting health, we also have a number of skills and people with different skill sets coming to, to this field. I think it's very, very, you know, it's a very conducive area for the growth of non-profits. Um, one of the things that really connects a lot of them is actually how do they how do they frame their health messages um, in a powerful way that can have a, a, an impact. Uh, and they've been trying, you know, people working in public health have been trying to do that for a number of years. Um, and one of the things that they've drawn inspiration from is the art of storytelling. And several initiatives have sort of sprouted up around you know, the skills in storytelling uh, to promote public health messages. And, and one key tool that's used in storytelling is film. Um, and we grabbed onto this. We knew that, 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 that you know, it had been around for a long time, but we felt that you know, there were a few initiatives that showed the level of interest that there was in using film to tell public health messages. And these are just some of the initiatives. And um, there are <coughs> plenty of local initiatives, both here in the US, which I talked about at the Yale School, at the uh, American Public Health Association, but also over here, Royal Society of Medicine have a, a global health film initiative that's part of their global health um, subcommittee, um, as well as um, other uh, initiatives over here. But one thing that we found that was really lacking with any of these initiatives was a focus on film itself. These were initiatives that were trying to frame a message, that were trying to um, use film to promote their message, were, weren't actually trying to bring together artists and filmmakers with health people um, to actually develop the field itself. And so we thought that's where our niche is. That's where we can we can you know really make an impact. Um, so if you look at the the, the the sort of journey of translating a story into a film and having impact, a lot of the initiatives were concentrated on the really beginning part of actually scripting the story and trying to get their message out there. And not a lot on the, the, the end part about actually, you know, how do you, how do you make sure that your film gets out there and has impact? How can you prove that? How can you increase the evidence for the use of film in public health? And so that's where we, we, we pitched ourselves as a, a charity. So as I say, what we did was initially we, we formed the Oxford Public Health Film Club. And we did some screenings there. Um, we then put together a plan to launch the Public Health Film Society. We had a launch event um, and we did the, the first film festival in 2016 um, and we got charitable status in 2015 and then we ran our second um, Public Health Film Festival in 2016 and along the way we managed to actually gather up quite a few collaborations that helped us to, and, and that were, were signed on to this idea of actually trying to advance the evidence base for health fields. And in our second 
Film Festival in 2016, um, we showcased um, some films around, you know, that trying to bring in the broader areas of public health, around health and housing. Here we had a, the, the film director, Tony Garnett, come to talk to us about, you know, the making of this film, what inspires them about it. But also 2016 was marked, our, our second film festival also marked the start of our first film competition. And here we were trying to say, you know, what constitutes a good film? You know, can can we can we get that down? What constitutes a good health film? Can we get that down to some criteria? Can we get together people from the health field and from the film world to sit down and look at, you know, uh, uh, some submitted films, and then have some criteria of which to judge those films? to say one is good or not. Um, <clears throat> and we managed to, to, to do that. We got together a, a group of distinguished people from the film world and from the public health world. And we got a short list and then a, a, a winning film. This is a film called Up For Air by a New York filmmaker, um, all about the, the benefits of exercise for those with chronic illness. It's actually a great film if anybody wants to watch it. Um, the guy followed this uh, the protagonist for five years and actually, you know, told a really, really good story um, about, you know, the benefits of exercise, um, which is something we all very well know, but actually, you know, the, the, the story is around the benefits of exercise for those who have existing chronic disease, which we thought was a really novel sort of take on a really Com a key public health message. Not only that though, what we did was we published the criteria. So it was the very first time we've actually published the criteria, really to bring people into a debate about what makes a good health bill. And so what we're doing this year is <coughs> we are rerunning the film festival again and rerunning the film competition again. And hopefully we're going to build on some of the successes that we had in our last um, film festival. But I want to talk a little bit more about some of the sort of longer term challenges for us as, as, as a charity in this space. And um, we are, having, having looked at the charitable list in the UK, there are lots and lots of film societies, and many of them are geographically based. Um, I believe that we are one of the first that are issue based, so it's not geographical based. Um, so, you know, we're trying to blaze a trail here. Um, but we have been we have been predicated on a model of event based um, development. So, you know, we get our funding in bursts um, as the you know festivals and events come on. And so one of the challenges for us going forward is actually how do we how do we have a sustainable model of development as a charity? I mean, can we go project? Could we have a project-based sort of model of development? And this all times in with the second part is about you know what do we think? You know, how do we think we can develop the field? Um, and you know, can we can we develop a concept here about about where film fits into the public health toolkit as such, where it fits into the work processes of the public health practitioner at the front line. And, and that will then help us to then, I, I believe, that would help us to you know, mould our business model to a concept of how we think film fits into the work life um, of a public health practitioner. Um, and so I think that, that talks to the second part, which is about, you know, you know, how do we continue to influence the field, not just through our events and through our competitions, um, but through other things that we can do. And just the last thing I wanted to talk about is that um, we were hoping to launch it this year, but hopefully uh, uh, in sometime in the near future, is that uh, based on the work that we've done with the, the, the um, judging committee for our film competition, and we've been asked by a publisher to, to write a book about film, almost like a textbook, as to you know where where has, where health film come up to now, 
and where do we see it going into the future? You know, can it be a key tool uh, as part of our public health toolkit? So, last thing I wanted to, to mention is, is, is that um, we are currently organising our public health film festival for this year. Uh, it was originally going to be in Liverpool, and um, it's actually now going to be in Oxford in six to the eighth of December. We will we will publish details very very shortly. I'm just due to get a confirmation from the universities that uh, it's going to go ahead. But as soon as we uh, have that information, I will. Um, pass it around the network. Everybody's welcome. Films are completely free uh, and we would really, really welcome your, your input and discussion to the films. And uh, thank you. And any questions? Happy to answer. So I've just got to blow my nose. Way, first, while we're waiting for a couple of questions, um, I wanted to thank you, especially under the circumstances for, for uh, sharing the spotlight with us. I can't imagine a, a better way to get started with our Yana Europe spotlight. So thank you very much. Excellent, uh, excellent um, and review of your, of your work. And I hope we can connect people to, to help you. So yeah, please, uh, questions uh, from anyone. Feedback to, to Wei, feedback to us, questions on, the, on his, his work at the public Health Film Festival and, and uh, Society. Wait, did you say the 2018 would be in early December? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, the 2016 was sort of late November. Our main competitor is the American Public Health Film Association Film Festival, and their one is in, in early November. Um, there are, as I say, very few you know, sort of festivals within this space and we, we, we like to try to avoid each other to give the filmmakers an opportunity to present their films on, on, on both sides of the shore. Right. Can we just chime in with a question, Rachel? Yeah, yeah I think so. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Wei, uh, for the, the presentation. I, I think... Um, can you I, I think I'm sorry, can you just announce yourself because not everybody oh, can see who's yeah. talking. That's okay. Um, so this is Mick Hirsch. Um, I live in outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, graduated from the Yale Divinity School in 2003. I'm now executive director of an organization that works in northern Uganda primarily, um, working with uh, previously um, uh, internally displaced individuals, and we do mental health recovery. So I guess my question is, um, we it, so in the context of northern uganda we do a lot of work um along the lines of public health around um awareness raising of of mental health issues of of destigmatization of uh of mental health uh, uh disorders um but we of course are on a very small scale so we're not uh, we're, we're not able to produce anything like uh you know hollywood blockbusters um i'm i'm curious if the Public Health Film Society has done, uh, or like how you, how you, or what sort of interventions you've done to support small organizations that might be able to do um, smaller scale uh, film, uh, you know, the, make a smaller scale film that might also be uh, for uh, information dissemination in local contexts, um, as well as maybe uh, on, on uh, the larger global. Uh, context. Uh, th thanks, Mick. It, it's really interesting that you mentioned, you know, the, the work in Africa and also uh, the work around mental health. Actually, there, there, there are plenty of connections there that we can we can offer. I mean, talking about the, the work in um, West Africa, um, there has been the, the media environment in West Africa is, is quite unique. Um, we've had some discussions of. Um, production companies um, who are working with NGOs there um, who have actually developed um, media based interventions um, and have been able to trial them in, in those um, it, uh, circumstances because of the unique landscape of the media environment there. 
And one that comes to mind is Development Media International. They published a paper a, a, a few years ago now in The Lancet, um, which talked about um, a, a media intervention that they did for children and young, um, and young people uh, about maternal care. Um, and they were able to put, intervene in certain areas and then not in other areas. And so were able to have a, quite a robust evaluation of that intervention to make sure it worked. It, they, they did actually show that it had a considerable effect in changing behaviours at a population level. Um, so, you know, I think the, the landscape, the media landscape that you work in is actually quite conducive to a, a, a media intervention and also a, a robust evaluation of a media intervention. I think the model yeah. there is, is from the last paper. I'm very, very happy to send you that. And um, the other thing is that um, in terms of mental health specific films, there are quite a few initiatives. We, we focus on um, what is it, uh, public health films, so mental health would come under umbrella. But in terms of specific mental health um, films, there is a Scottish mental health film festival that's been running for the past decade, um, and they regularly get thousands of people. And there, there are quite a few films that you might find interesting for your work. So maybe it's not about actually, you know, making a film. It's actually maybe about, you know, there. There's some films that are already made that you could actually say, you know, could we could we get a license to show these films, and um, or could we work with somebody to sort of, you know, tweak the films for our own benefit. So, um, and I can, I'm happy to put you in contact with the organisers of that film festival. And then the third thing is that we have collaborations with the UK Faculty of Public Health Specialist Interest Group on Africa. And we're just putting together an, a grant application with them, actually. It's, 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 not, it's not what you're thinking of as a small film. <laughs> They're thinking of a much bigger project. Um, but it might be an idea there, actually, as a, as a, as a sort of a template to work on as to how we develop a film in Africa is actually what they've got, they've got contacts in, in Africa, especially in Nigeria and Nollywood, the, the film industry there. Um, and it's levering those, leveraging those contacts in the industry, as well as the Ministry of Health, to try and get co-funded. So we're trying a co-funding model with the Ministry of Health, uh, with production companies in Nollywood, and with the Wellcome Trust to make a film. Um, about that. Their film is about TV resistance. Um, but the, the, the sort of funding model, the collaboration model, might work uh, for your film. So I'm happy to discuss any of those things with you. Uh, and as I say, happy to discuss what you want in terms of you know uh, uh, a you know a film that would be suitable for your work excellent thank you uh, I think all of those uh, suggestions are uh, fascinating and, and I uh, I was unaware of all of them I, I would be very interested in following up with you so I'll, I'll send um, I can send an email to the public health Please. film society at gmail.com and um, we can Please. we can connect through that Please. Yeah. And definitely, you know, do have a look at that Lancet paper. It's um, an intriguing, you know, paper. Um, the list of, you know, sort of, and the methods that they use are very, very, very good. Excellent. And you said that was in Ghana, is that right? Um, it was. It was in West Africa. I can't remember exactly what country it was. It may be okay. Liberia. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, <coughs> sorry. But I will track the paper down and I'll send it to you. I'm also very happy to put you in contact with the people from the production company and they can talk to you about, you know, their contacts in the, the media side uh, there and whether, you know, they would be happy to sort of work for you on, on, on uh, you know, making your own film. Excellent. Thank, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, yeah. And I just sent an email. I'm sending an email, we and Mick, to each of you so you can see each other's direct emails. Thank you, Rachel. Anyone else? We, I had a question. Mm -hmm. It's Rachel. Um, yep. Do you guys do any work or any involvement with um, 
Latin America. We have a bunch of um, kind of like Nick, uh, Vienna mm -hmm. members who work in either uh, kind of like the Uganda thing in um, Colombia with reentry in public health for women, former guerrillas, as well as um, somebody who does similar kind of work at one of, in Nicaragua. So I didn't know if there was anything related to. Um, I would I would absolutely love to. We, we've always been involved in two small niche areas. Uh, I have to I have to talk about it. Uh, okay, know, right, so really maybe after this, I'll put you in touch uh, with those other folks and see please. Yeah, what yeah. we might be able to do. I mean, I think there's some really, really interesting issues in terms of public health, but also interesting interventions in, in regards to public health that are going on in South America. Certainly around sugar tax, um, which is a big thing here, um, but it's it's, uh, it's already been done, you know, extensively in, in Mexico. Great, great, thank you. Wade, this is Thatcher. Uh, while we're on the topic of Africa and South South America, my my son and daughter-in-law both work for two different NGOs um, in in Africa, and my daughter-in-law in Latin America as well. Uh, International Union for Cancer Control. Um, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll uh, if I could forward your presentation to them and maybe make the introduction. They might be very interested to to, uh, to, to work with you, get get some ideas, and maybe give some ideas as well. So I'm just going to turn the light on. I just realise it's very dark. Um, uh, yeah, please, please do. Okay, um, I'd be more than happy to speak. With And thanks again for using your voice so well today. It must have been tough for you, but I really appreciate you uh, you you're going through with this. Very, very nice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Wade. No, no problem. I, I appreciate it. And as I say, uh, you know, more than, everybody's more than welcome to uh, to come to the film festival if you're around the UK in uh, in early December. Uh, even if you come for the sightseeing sightseeing in Oxford, you know, it's always a good opportunity. Now, Rachel, I think we're going to be publishing this um, this slide on on YouTube. Is that correct? Correct. Here, I'm going to stop recording now.